everybody. Welcome to Wingman's Hangar, episode 41. Due to the Congress and Senate of the United States cutting back this week, there might be a few technical difficulties as we had to lay Moreland off because, you know, the UEE, we couldn't afford to pay our bills and... <sighs> sorry. Ah, just kidding. Of course we're in session, but I do hope they get that stuff worked out. It's ridiculous. We pay them to be our people in uh, power and government and they do this. Unbelievable. But who cares about them? Because we've got Star Citizen to talk about. Episode 41, which is one away from episode, you know, 42, Squadron 42, 41. Well, if you're new to the show, if you've never been here before, this is a show about Star Citizen, everything inside Cloud Imperium Games. All our offices from Santa Monica to Austin to Montreal to Monterey and a few others uh, to be announced, perhaps. Uh, maybe somewhere in the west of the United States. Who knows? Or maybe somewhere else. Mm. Anyway, it's everything about Star Citizen, and we want to give you the inside look at what's going on. So what do we got coming up this week? Well, we have the Week in Review, where we kind of tell you exactly what went on inside the company this week. We have forum feedback uh, with a lot of really cool videos. You guys really stepped it up this week and sent in a lot of videos. Some excellent questions. We also have an interview with Mr. Brochure himself, David Ladyman. Now, if you're a subscriber and... Thank you very much to you guys, which allow us to do this. David is the one who puts together the brochures for you guys, and he really, really does a bang-up job. I think you'll like the interview because David's been around um, a bit with Chris and myself and goes way, way back, and it's going to be a really fun time. What else do we have? Well, this week, let's get right to the week. Are we in the weekend review already? Holy moly, we are. Citizen Con is coming. Now, it's not technically a Citizen Con. It is, but it isn't. It's not really a con. It's more about an anniversary of the first year of uh, Cloud Imperium or the announcement where Chris took the stage. He was up for like, I don't know, 50 straight hours. I mean, I'm sitting there editing the PowerPoint at like 6.30 in the morning and he's going up at 10 and immediately we go up on the stage or he goes up there and he goes, I'm going to do this space game. And the website goes, yay, you guys blew it up, which is awesome. Um, and who could have seen that, that this community, that all of us would want this game so much that it has grown to where it's grown today and continues to grow, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. But anyway, that's coming up. CitizenCon, what does that mean? Well, in Austin, we have a few. We're going to have a, a party with all the dev team. We're all getting together. We're going we're gonna to have a little event. We're going to give a little updates from all the different teams about what's going on. Starts at 6 p.m. The house opens for the people that, that have been invited, and then at 6.30, hmm, 6.30, we're going to have da -na -na, a live stream. We wouldn't want anybody to miss it, now would we? Heck no, we're sharing it with everybody. So we've got a live stream. Actually, we'll probably start a little before 6.30 where yours truly will be interviewing some of the people that are coming there and kind of giving you an update, kind of, you know, what's going on or what's about to happen. Think of it as kind of a little red carpet thing, but not really red carpet, just kind of, you know, hanging out with people, hanging out with the peeps. And then we have Showtime at 6.30. Well, you'll get to see an update from all the various studios and what they're up to. Might be a couple surprise announcements in there. I know that Sandy's always got something cooking up her sleeves. So there's a lot of cool stuff. You don't want to miss this live stream. It's not going to be a long, like, 24-hour, 12-hour. It's basically just a one-hour live stream, so you don't want to miss it. It'll be... Uh, six, it'll be about an hour 15, 6.15 to 7.30 or so on October 10th, Thursday, Central Time. So think about 6.15 p.m. Central Time, October 10th. Now, I, I don't know what that would be Greenwich Mean Time, but I think it's minus 5. Is that right, Mike? Minus 5? That is correct. We're still in Central Daylight Time. Central Daylight Time, minus 5. Thank you, Mr. Moreland. Um, so get ready for that. Oh, man. Mm. Major faux pas. Ugh, mea culpa. Last week, somebody sent us... A massage for all the people and it was amazing and you take a look at that That's, you know we had a little fun with that but I forgot to I failed to mention this is completely on my, my fault I failed to mention who sent that to us so I want to say big thanks to Vermifuge, Eden World and Razor Lips thank you guys very very much um, it was in the script last week I blew it not the first time and uh, probably not the last so thank you guys very much appreciate that we also had this week the character slot system was announced. Man, that thing went through so many iterations. Um, you know, Chris uh, really, really worked hard on that with everybody, the team and everything. And the solution that he came up with was, 
you know, one that, that I think that people really enjoyed and liked and, and a lot of the ideas and thoughts came from that massive long thread in the forums where, you know, we read all that and we're like, yeah, that works and we don't really like that. And it went through several, several iterations before we felt happy and before Chris himself said, stamp of approval, that's what I want to do. And, and again, thanks to you guys and, and Mr. Roberts, we came out with what we think was an excellent, excellent choice. And so that worked out well. Uh, we have new hires um, in the one, it, well, both of them are going to be in the Santa Monica office, Santa Monica, uh, Mantica, Santa Monica, Santa Monica office. This is what happens when you go to sushi at lunch and maybe you have a little soggy. Soggy to me. Uh, Alan P., we got a lighting artist in Santa Monica that starts, and we got JB, a technical animator. So the teams continue to grow. We get bigger and bigger as the game uh, is getting done, and it's <laughs> it just is going to take a lot of really talented folks to make the game that we all want. Uh, office update. Oh God, it's like it's like. <laughs> It's like I feel like I need a luck dragon to ride around on in the never-ending story because um, we're down to like one little item. or It's not actually little. It's actually a fairly big point. And we've got our lawyer on it. Uh, one of the co-founders, Ortwin, is working hard on it. And he's we're down to the last bit. Uh, it's a big deal, though, if, if, uh, if we don't work out this small point or this big point, then, you know, we'll have to find somewhere else. And that's what I want to do is look at more office space because I think I've looked at about 60 already, but we'll find it and hopefully it'll be this one, but if not, we'll find another one. Oh, time for my weight. Uh, we had a lot of people, your people are right, I need to exercise. Uh, started at 236 pounds. Last week I stagnated at 215, mm, I know. So what happened this week? That's right, right back at you. 213 pounds, baby, going the right direction. I got a little walking in this week with uh, with my dog and gonna continue that, keep it up, and uh, hopefully we get the new office space, there's a gym right there, and we'll be able to take advantage of that. So that was good. Ooh, but you know what we could do? I could always just wear a corset and like, <laughs> suck in the weight, and oh, there goes my head, what? <laughs> Knee deep. In dog fighting, it is we are knee deep in dog fighting. And you see, Chris is at leading the charge on tons and tons of meetings and figuring out exactly what we're going to do for iteration one, iteration two, iteration three. As you can see here, it's going to be pretty fun. And now it's time for feedback. All right, there's that head again. So, uh, Rob, welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So let's get right to the first question, which comes from one of our subscribers, Tector. Our subscribers. I know, right? It's amazing. Without them, there is no us. Yeah. So he says he's just curious as to whether the might of the UEE military will vary depending on the wealth of the economy. Well... Yeah, all right. We're just having a little bit of fun there. So, Rob, will it... Will, it, uh, will, will that happen? Typically, the military actually is stronger when there's more unrest. So, you know, mm. if you think about it, if you start messing with the economy too much, I'm guessing the UEE will actually come after you a little more. Right, because they don't want their power threatened. Right. Wow, that's interesting. Now, the UEE could, the, the military could have some difficulties as part of the storyline, mm. not just because of the economy. Gotcha, fair enough. From Lars, he says, would I be able to pick up a player in my cargo hold or hallway area, even if my ship is a single seater? Hmm, that's interesting. Well, like a Hornet, where would you put a player? You're obviously not going to be able to do it in a Hornet. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe in an Aurora or ships where there is some extra space where, you know, somebody could camp out. Right, they camp out. <laughs> you're not camping out in the Hornet is what you're saying. No, mm -hmm. no, probably not. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, from da Dragon Fire Malice, he says... So I'm finally in my brand new constellation. Now I just have to figure out where I'm going to park it. Let's see, what do they give me with? Oh, hey, what do we got here? Owner's manual. That can go straight out the airlock. Oh, this should be more helpful. Guide to hangars. Wow, Earth is expensive. Terra's not bad. Well, maybe I'll find somewhere in the Ellis system. Dear Wingman, when we're finally able to choose our home world for our starting hangar, will all the systems and planets be available, or only select few? Please let me know as soon as possible because until I find a place, I'm just going to be floating around. Cool video there. Very nice. Mm -hmm. 
Um, all, all is a lot. Um, it, it's a whole lot. I, I think uh, it's going to be a limited set. A limited set. So there'll be some people you'll be able to choose where you're going to be or you know, at least put something that you, this is kind of the area I'd like to be in maybe. Or But our early backers will have one more system, system to choose from than that is players true. who start on day one. That's true. From Marcus Steele, what if you come across two ships attacking another ship and you lend a hand and attack the ships attacking the other one? Does that make you an outlaw? Or does the fact that they're already in combat make it legal? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah, that's a tough question because, you know, it could be two pirates attacking and then you yeah. feel like you're the white knight hero and then it could be it could could be two bounty hunters attacking a pirate. So what, how do you figure that out? I guess it, it, it all depends on who's involved. I mean, if you jump in on the side of, call them bad guys, mm -hmm. as far as the UEE is concerned, then yes, your reputation would take a hit. Mm -hmm. If you jump in against them, then it shouldn't hurt your reputation. Right, and maybe there'll be some sort of mechanism which will let you know what you're jumping into. Maybe. How cold the water is, so to speak. <laughs> From Johan Weller, if I have a deluxe hangar with only a Constellation ship, can a friend be invited and land their 300i Aurora or Hornet in it before heading out in the Constellation? Oh, coming to crew a friend's ship. Can they land? Oh, interesting. Oh. Well, you know, it depends on if there's space in the hangar. But... Mm. The hangar will probably be expandable. I mean, we'll lock in what your initial hangar is for all of your pledge ships um, or, or at, near the end when, right. when we're in beta. But then we'll probably give you options to expand it. So if you want a little guest space or if you happen to have one of your ships out somewhere else, then yeah, you might have some guest space to put somebody in. It's right, an interesting question, though. I don't think we've actually gotten to that point of figuring that out. Yeah, so it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of cool. Um, from Lone Wolf, cool video here. Hey, Wingman, just a quick question for you. Can we change the color scheme of our ships? For example, can we paint our 325 black with a blue stripe instead of what is already there by default? Ah, another cool video from the citizens out there. Good job. It's good to see them all getting on board. Love it, love it, love it. So can we change the color scheme of our ships? We are still working out exactly how that technology is going to work, right. but yeah, they're, they're, you're going to have the option to change like your paint scheme on some of your ships and everything. Um, a lot of the variant ships, you know, with their different their different paint schemes, mm -hmm. people tend to like one paint scheme over another, but they don't want that variant. So we'll let them change the paint out at some point. Yes. Cool. Well, there you go. That's cool. From Envoy, will I be able to move the furniture around in my hangar? This is something we get a lot of, um, and rightfully so. It's a really big deal. Do you want it? Do you want to take that one? Well, yes, I do want to take that one. Okay. And yes is the answer. Sweet. We are working on the technology mm -hmm. to allow you to really customize your hangar mm -hmm. and have a personal space that you can be proud of and show off to all your friends. Now, doesn't that kind of take uh, persistence? Persistence. Because it's got right now the the stuff that you have in your hangar, it, it's there, and then it, we populate the hangar immediately, and it's got a set place and. We eventually need persistence to be there to where um, the things you place will still be there <laughs> the next time you log in. So uh, it's coming. It's coming. It is coming. Oh, from Unchained Boar, 1991. If you find an asteroid that is heavy in valuable minerals, will you be able to blast it and use tractor beams? Or are you going to need some kind of drilling equipment to mine? I, are we asteroids? <laughs> the game. I found something valuable. I think I'll blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we, uh, are we going to be able to use tractor beams and blow it up? Or how's that you, you could, but you'll probably lose a lot of the content if you just blow it up. That's why we have things like mining lasers. So surgical precision. Surgical. Get all the goodies out. Precision. From Flashbang M17. You know, the names are getting to be... <laughs> Totally different. As we grow, you're getting some... some <laughs> not that this is a pretty cool name. Flashbang M17. I'm sure there's something in there. Does armor thickness play a role in Star Citizen? Well, that's a very simple question. It is. With a very complicated answer. Oh, okay. So, yes. Uh, actually, CryEngine does have a concept of penetration, and so you have a, a certain ability to penetrate versus the thickness of the armor. So, yeah, in the cases where your armor is thicker than the penetration ability of a weapon, then it will damage the armor, but won't damage all the soft, squishy components underneath. Oh. But if you have, like, uh, projectile weapons typically have better penetration on shields, but not on armor. And the opposite for lasers. So, yes, it does play a part. Oh, that's cool. All right. From Cyrus Talon, now that we know that ships and packages have to be assigned to a specific character in-game, what about skins? Are skins bound to account, character, or ship? 
all the things that you have on your account are going to work the same way, and that they'll all get parceled out to somewhere, some player, when you're ready to assign them. Um, until they've been used, basically, they don't have to stick on one player, I believe is what Chris has said. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, skins will work just like the ships. You'll pick one player to carry it. Now, you can move that skin from ship to ship for that one character, but it will be bound to one character. All right. From Daedalus. I uh, just had some questions about uh, piracy as in regards to the character uh, reputation system in uh, Star Citizen. So if a pirate happens to acquire some fuel and then decides to offload it to a, uh, a neutral trader, is the neutral trader automatically getting a bad reputation for carrying goods that may or may not have been stolen? Mm. Well, interesting question. Mm -hmm. So we're still kind of in the middle of design on, on piracy and stolen property and things like that. Um, we are planning to have some sort of tagging system so we can identify stolen cargoes. That doesn't mean you couldn't take them somewhere like, say, Spider and get them scrubbed. But yeah, if you take stolen cargo and it's identified as stolen, then yeah, you're going to get dinged. So be careful out there. Sweet, sweet. From Smile, regarding economy missions, Will they be just fetch quests, like I need a certain quantity of something at this coordinates? Or do you have any details on how you're going to handle this? Well, for the basic economy missions, yes. I mean, that's, that's precisely what it is. The economy is running itself and saying, hey, this place needs this thing, and this place has this other thing. Mm -hmm. So they'll, they'll sell that to you, and you can take it somewhere else that needs it. Right. Or you can sell it, I mean, you can take it and just kind of speculatively trade it. But, um, yeah, that's, that's the economy missions. Now, there are going to be other types of missions, too. So, I mean, that's not all there is to it. Right, fair enough. From Makesor. Ah, Wingman, I'm so glad you received my message. Would I, as a citizen of the UEE, which I most certainly am, uh, would I be able to, say, run for office, uh, become a councilman? Uh, would I be able to vote on the man means tariffs and uh, new laws proposed uh, to uh, sway the balance of politics in uh, my favor? I mean... Uh, the favor of my constituents, of course. <laughs> a politician. Hmm. We've talked about it. I, I don't know if we've made any progress one way or the other, but we've certainly, we have had quite a few discussions about how involved players can be in the politics of the universe, and, and I think it would be very interesting for players to be able to get involved in that. Um, I don't know what level that'll be yet. Right, fair enough, fair enough. Sometimes I don't know is the answer. Yeah, that's a lot of times that's the answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're going through this, so, you know, um, well, if you, if you have an idea on how you'd like to do it, throw it up in the forums, you know. Might inspire some, uh, some discussion and thought on that. From Lodum, will there be less civilized places to land in Star Citizen? I think when he's talking about less, less civilized here, he's talking about frontier worlds, less developed uh, worlds, not, you know, like, rude. Right, like, but, <laughs> like right, pirate level. He's talking maybe like camp, camp areas or things that are being terraformed or just just starting to be colonized. So. Yeah, and right now a lot of what you've seen is is the big cities because yes. those take the most work to build. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there are going to be outposts and, and you know barely occupied planets. I mean, at points when we discover new planets, you'll be bringing settlers and starting those places out. So yes, absolutely. Uh, from and I'm not sure how to say this, but it looks like Maiskel Kev might. How would you, Mitzkel? How would you say that? Mitzkel? Mitzkel Kev? Mitzkel Kev. From Mitzkel Kev, hopefully we didn't butcher your name, will we be able to mass some cargo from sensors? Is there an item in your ship or something you can attach to cargo containers to mask their signatures from pirate scans? Kind of ties into that other question. Why, yes. In fact, we've, uh, we've done a lot of work on smuggling, other clever things like that. Um, <laughs> we've done a lot of smuggling. We've done a lot... No comment. No Cuban cigars in this office. <laughs> <laughs> Around the world, those aren't smuggling, but right. in the U.S. it is. Right. Like yes, or, or the, the Kinder Eggs. Not that we're asking for you to send any. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't. Out of control. I know. I Out of control. So, what was the question? <laughs> okay, oh, yes, They want to mass yes. cargo from sensors. Yes, okay. So, there are going to be several different ways to... Disguise what's in your cargo bay, either disguise the individual contents or actually um, mask the whole cargo bay or, or, or reduce the ability of it to be scanned. Doesn't mean there's not technology to get through that. Rock, paper, scissors. Right, exactly. Okay, this is, uh, this is one of our contributors from Jazz Arrow. At what point can we expect atmospheric flight? 
It's a pretty, pretty cool video That's we did That's a very there. nice video. Yeah, you know, we've, we've, asked, we've answered this question a few times before, but again, there are people joining new to the program, and we have to kind of, you know, have a few old and new mixed in. And it looks cool. I it mean, does. We, we yeah, you, you put that. the time into making that cool video. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's but, right. And that's why we're answering it again. But, yeah, the, the, the simple answer is we are planning to do it at some point. Right. The cost of that as far as development is you have to build out the entire planets yeah. then. And that means, you know, with the hundreds and hundreds of planets we have in our game, that takes some time. So, I mean, I, I can't give you a timeline, but yes, we do plan to do it at some point. Some point in the future. From Kraken, also another subscriber, how will we be able to capture a Vandal Scythe in game? I heard about the salvage mechanism, but how does it work? First of all, is it Sith or Scythe? Scythe. Sith. So if you're going to capture Vandal Sith, <laughs> all right, Scythe, how are you going to how are you going to do that? Three Scythe. Um, well. You could disable its engines mm -hmm. with EMP. Mm -hmm. That would work. Mm -hmm. Maybe blow off its engines and then tractor it in to your bigger ship. You think somebody else might be selling one out there? Like there might be some, you know, people that are selling captured ones out there. Maybe you never know. You never can tell. Who knows? And maybe if you just PM me, I'll just send you one. Not! <laughs> Just kidding. Along with the bagels? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that's right. 57 million stretch goal. Bagel <laughs> A bagel carrier. carrier for everyone. I'm sorry you guys misunderstood me. <laughs> um, <laughs> from Pinkgasm. In Wingman Singer 36, during the form feedback session in Germany, Chris answers a question about the arena mode. In his answer, he directly relates the dogfighting module to the arena mode. So my question follows from that. Will the arena mode and the dogfighting module be basically the same thing? That's a well, good question. Are they the same, arena and dogfighting? Not exactly, but I mean, yeah, what Chris said, I mean, obviously, he's, he's liking the two because they're going to be similar elements to what eventually is the arena mode final in the game and mm -hmm. what we start out with in dogfighting, most likely. But, you know, it, it's, it's all going to grow over time. Every part of this game is going to continue to grow over time. So there will be some similarities, I'm sure. Yeah, they'll be, they'll be, it's all going to, it's all going to be together. I mean, even the, the modules that we're building externally, planet side and things, eventually they tinker toy together and they, so it, it all happens that way. Ah, from another subscriber, Daleks, is there a way to become a forum moderator? Yes. Yeah. But if we tell you, we'll have to kill you. No. <laughs> the truth is, it's one of those things that's don't ask us, we'll ask you kind of deal. Um, we generally look for people that make good posts on a consistent basis and um, are well respected in, in the members of the community. They're not too, they're, they're mild mannered. They're able to have uh, intelligent discourse without flaming or getting mad at each other all the time. And so um, we're very picky about who our moderators are going to be. And, um, and Ben does an excellent job of, of choosing them. He does. Yeah. From Fire Dragon, an interesting video. Sitting here makes you ponder. Wingman, uh, my question is, will we get UEC when we are in the dogfight sim module? You know, I think we've had a, one of those kind of sounds on this show before. <laughs> if you don't know what that's about, go check out the very first Wingman's nose cam. Um, so can you win UEC in the dogfighting module? We're talking about it. Um, I don't. I can't give any hard numbers or anything right now. You know, how often or how much. But yeah, there there will probably be ways for you to earn money. I know Chris has, has talked about doing that. Yeah. It's just it's a matter of win. Yeah, it's a matter. It is, and it's a matter yeah. of balancing out so that it, it works within the economy. And yeah, we don't want to break the economy. Don't want to break the economy. That'll be your job. <laughs> so you know what time <laughs> it is now? Time for Ben Lisnick and this week's most valuable posts. Hey everyone, welcome to the Most Valuable Post. I'm Community Manager Ben Lesnick. I'm here to tell you what the absolute best posts at the RSI Forum were this week. Now the person who gets the MVP award receives a special Most Valuable Poster badge for use of the forums and 5,000 UEC to spend at the Voyager Direct Store. So uh, keep posting good stuff to the forums. Now our big winner this week is something called The Whole Truth, which is a weekly podcast, video podcast that uh, shares with the community basically all the information that's been released about Star Citizen in a given week. Uh, it's very well put together. Uh, we saw this. We were very impressed. Uh, it's created by a gentleman called The Romantics, and uh, it's, it's just very well done. It's a great way to get caught up on Star Citizen. 
We also have a uh, runner-up this week, which goes to Pleasure for his post about the Squadron 24 minigame. It's a little top-down shooter he's been putting together that uses Star Citizen elements in kind of a, like a Galaga-style arcade game. Uh, there are some screenshots, and we are looking forward to uh, seeing the actual game. Back to you, Eric. Thanks, Ben. Love both of those. And I actually got an early look at uh, Pleasure and Zane's uh, 24 minigame. It's pretty cool. Uh, and thanks for both of you guys for making most valuable posts. 5,000 UECs to all those involved. Uh, and now it's time for, well, the existential break with our very own Markimus Skeletimus. <laughs> If a synchronized swimmer drowns, do the rest have to drown too? So uh, that's, a, I guess, kind of a question about the Olympics, which, by the way, our <laughs> guest, David Ladyman, you, uh, you actually kind of participated, right? They pay you to make connections like that, don't yeah, they? Yeah, it's a, I forget what it's called. Where it's you, a segue. You, yeah, it's a segue or something it's like that. It's one of those that. English words. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's also that really cool thing you can't fall that's off true. of, I unless mean, you're a bad president of the United States. I haven't been on one of those yet. No, yes. pretty cool. Okay. So you were, you did, you were like, what, is it Epi, Epe? How do you say uh, I was, I was a sword fighter back in my younger and leaner days. Uh, was this in the Society of the Creative Anachronism? <laughs> no, uh, it was the uh, the U.S. Fencing Association. It was the real fencers. No not kidding. The SC uh, we're not supposed to offend people, are we? It was no. different from the SC. <laughs> right, a little different. Yes, but that's pretty uh, cool. So, do you still fence? I do not. As I said, that was in my younger and leaner days, uh, and when my knees would not give way when I jumped up and down. And, uh, Fair enough, but you must have been pretty good then. I. The height that I reached was I placed sixth at the 1973 Junior National Championships. Cool, cool. Uh, that's uh, engraved on my wall, in fact. Is it? Uh, <laughs> it's, that's on your wall? <laughs> no. Uh, but, the, the, uh, 1993, you mean, right? <laughs> <laughs> the 93. My, uh, my claim to fame there is that then uh, a few years later, in 84, Martha and I were staff at the Olympics. Oh, we volunteered that's cool. to go out and uh, be scorekeepers and runners and things like that. And they gave me, shall I pull? Yeah, sure, let's see some goodies. Yeah. You got a lot of stuff to show. I think yeah. people are gonna like to see some of the stuff you brought. The the uniforms for the staffers were five colors that appear in no national flag. Uh, ah. so creamsicle orange. Creamsicle orange. And uh, federal yellow, I think it was called. Okay. But that's that's the the staff uniform. And in fact, in the life year in pictures. Right. Are you able to zoom that in very tight? I don't know. We just will hold it up. Let him, are you yes. actually in one of the pictures? I am in one of the pictures. You, you have to really go digging. No. This is the concluding touch in the French versus German team event. And Where are here you? on the table, mm -hmm. I'm that person right Unbelievable. there. Unbelievable. That is totally cool. So you were in Life Magazine. I was in Life Magazine. This is yes. your life, David half, Lady. Half an inch by half an inch, yes. That's pretty cool, though. But that puts me in the National Register of, of Life Magazine, and it, no. Does it really? No. Well, that's pretty cool. Now, now the fans are going to, scooch in a little bit here. We want to okay. get jump frame. So the fans are going to know, you, you do all the brochures for us. You do the Jump Point magazines, or you help with the brochures. Yeah. So tell them what you do. Okay, I get credit for doing Jump Point and the brochures. I don't do Jump Point and the brochures. What? Uh, a lot of very good people. Sure. Put Be all the material in there. Being modest is one and, of his things. Well, and it's it's a team thing. It is. Uh, it is. But uh, the I take all of the stuff that is given me and put it together into the brochures into. Uh, jump point. Right, and here we're looking at some of the images now that are that's that's rolling up there, and and uh, w what issue we're on? Like issue eleven now. We just did ten, so we're just we're planning eleven. And initially, it was going to be what seven to nine or six to nine pages or something. And I think Chris <laughs> promised four to six pages. <laughs> what happened? Uh, it was there was <laughs> I couldn't let it go at four to six pages. <laughs> It's great. I, it's amazing. It's now 
around 50 pages, right? It's, it's in that neighborhood, yeah. The the last two, one was very long, it was 79 pages. Oh, had all the, uh, the Gamescom. So you've got a company, that you, now you've worked with Chris, and we've worked together before, yep. and for a long time. Um, you were at Origin Systems. I was at Origin for about six years, yeah. Right, and you did a lot of the stuff on Wing Commander. Like, I'm looking over here, uh, uh, you've got some sort of jacket. You, you should probably show people what that is. This is this is the jacket. <laughs> this is the jacket. You need Which, to get it over here in the middle oh, here so they can okay. see it. Okay. Right, right. And it is the Heart of the Tiger jacket. Look at that right there. Origin Interactive Movie. Oh, uh, or, Origin it's Interactive Movie. Is that what it says, there's Origin there's Interactive Movie? Yep. yep. So that's before the actual Wing Commander movie, which we're showing at CitizenCon yes. here next week. So that'll be pretty cool. All right, you've got a lot of swag too. So you worked on the movie as well. Okay, it's again, it's I didn't do these. <laughs> I know, but you, you did. Yes. You're just uh, being modest. Would you have some? What do you got in there? Okay, got, what what we did, what IMGS did on the movie, right. is the official authorized Wing Commander Confederation handbook. Get it up there so we can see, right? Uh, and. It is everything that you would want to know. I'm supposed to flip through it like this, aren't I? Everything that you want to know about. There, keep waving at me. Okay, so he You can tell he's a man of print. Tolwyn's reports, the, the world it was in, the uh, aliens, the history of the pilgrims. Apparently, the pilgrims are explained in here so you understand what's going on in the movie. Right, right. Uh, I'm still flipping in. He wants me to stop. Lots of ships, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to stop. So, But you've done a lot. So you've worked on a lot, and, and now we're working on Star Citizen. Have you, yep. have you ever seen anything like this before in your well, life? Well, I mean, it's that one's a fairly simple answer. 20 million and, and counting, yeah. no one has ever seen it before. So Sure, sure. But, I mean, the fact that we are moving at light speed and putting so much content out, including the stuff that... that uh, now, the comp your company's called... Incan Monkeys? What? Incan Monkey Gods Incan Studios. Incan Monkey Gods. Now, yes. why Incan Monkey Gods? The, um, back in the day, this is, this is, this takes a little while. Shall I, shall I, okay. You, you can right. shorten it, though. Okay, I'll try to shorten it. <laughs> uh, back in the day, you had to release documentation with the game. Right. And the disc could be printed in about a week but it took about three weeks to print the manuals. Right. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. And so that meant there we had to turn the manual in two weeks before you finished making the game. Uh, and sometimes we just had to make it up. Uh, and sometimes we would have it exactly right, and in that two weeks, the team would go in and change it. Yep. And, and, and we, it, it, it stuck in us mightily to have to call it errata, when we had done the right thing, right, and then gotten it changed, but we had to release Arata. So we're we're having to do documentation before the stuff is, is right. designed. Uh, and there was one time we had a game releasing, and we just had to make some stuff up. And there was a Dilbert cartoon. Do we have? Yeah, this? well, okay. you can see we're the cartoon here on screen. There you uh, go. So fans out there can I, see that. Do we need to read it out, or no. do you think they can? Well, read I don't know. It? Do you want? Do you yeah. want? Want to do like a little radio <laughs> dramatization? <laughs> Which one would you want to be? I'll be, I'll be Tim. Okay. Gee, Tim, you look awful. I've been working for five days without any sleep to finish this report. At first, uh, it's mine. You still you. <laughs> At first, I had a mental block. But on the fourth day, I was visited by an Incan monkey god who told me what to write. Wow, lucky break. Now, I just have to find somebody who can translate his simple but elegant language. That, that is some quality so voice acting right it, there. Am I, do so I have a shot? So, yeah, so that's actually where you named it, the, it, uh, uh, no. Okay. There's no <laughs> shot of it. You know. It's, it's, you know, thank God Jump Point looks so good. Yes. <laughs> but so, so this is how you named your company then? Like the this Dilbert is, cartoon we, actually? We, we named ourselves Incan Monkey Gut. We realized that we were servants mm. of the Incan monkey god, that the only way we could get our work done was through devotion to the Incan monkey god. And as far as we know, there actually were no Incan monkey gods. But mm. that's where we came up with the name, Incan okay. Monkey God Studios. Now, you're working on a couple brochures coming up, and we don't want to tell people exactly when they're coming up, because there's an element of surprise. We've got... Two more brochures mm -hmm. in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Hoping to have them done soon. Soon, but yes. let's not tell them when. Hoping to have them done soon. Soon. Yes. And which two brochures are those? This would be the new 
2944 Aurora brochure mm-hmm. and the Hornet brochure. Which okay. also is twenty nine forty four, but it's the first one. So okay, but we're not gonna yeah. let's. Uh, we don't want to give them too much sure. on this stuff. They're just gonna have to wait, find out. But it's you said soon. Sure, soon, soon. <laughs> Word of the day is soon. So <laughs> I want to thank you, David, for joining us today. <laughs> Thanks a lot to subscribers and pledgers for uh, everything they've done. And and uh, without you guys, there is no us. Especially subscribers. Um, if you want to subscribe and get this man's gorgeous work or the team's gorgeous work. Yes. Please do so. It's amazing. Join our YouTube channel. Subscribe and find out the latest and greatest. When it happens, you'll get alerted and you'll find things out. Um, Coming up this week, we've got CitizenCon Prep. Still going, still going. CitizenCon Prep. And guess what? Special guest. Hey, Sandy. How you doing? Hi, Eric. (laughs) Good to see you guys. Good to see you. So it's a big week for us. I mean, uh, the anniversary of uh, the announcement. It is a huge week for us. We actually were shooting in the offices all day today on our green screen. Ooh. Um, in preparation for Citizen Con. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, we've got all flights booked. So everybody's flying on the same flight. Wow. We're going to pack out your office. Huh? Uh, oh, that's, yeah, well, that's okay because the, the truth is um, we do the distributed development and it's always great to get everybody together. And this is going to be the first time I think we've had all the offices in one location at once. Yeah, it's correct. It's going to be fun. We are packed house for the night. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chelsea is being managing the door list. And we've been begging people for extra seats. But we're completely <laughs> full. Completely <laughs> full. Now, we're doing that at the... Oh! Where, uh, what? <laughs> like that. I can't say what. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that where we are, uh, but we are. People on the live stream because we're going to be live streaming. That's a great point, live stream. So we are doing, for everybody else out there, they get to see, we're doing a live stream. um, And we're going to be having all the teams that are coming up or are part of this process. What are they going to be doing for us? They're going to be doing a little presentation of everything that they've done in this past year mm-hmm. um, and what they will be working on for Star Citizen, what they're excited about. So we're going to kick that off at 6.30 p.m. Central. 6.30 p.m. That's awesome. So people, and there might be a few surprises. We know that Chris likes to surprise what? us a little. Watch what you say, Mr. Um, I, I don't want to be redacted. <laughs> but yes, we're going to have a few surprises. Um, I've been working on some quite a few things and we're going to be able to sell perhaps and mm-hmm. show off. Ooh. Um, There's a lot of things people have been asking for that I think you're going to have some information that they're going to enjoy getting, I believe. Yes, I hope. I hope. Awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's going to be fun. So, all right, well, thank you for joining us. It's going to be a really fun event. The fans are going to love it. I'm sure they're looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing you, Chris, all the team out here. It's uh, it's a big event for us, and it's the first one. All right. Thanks for having me. Wow. Thanks, Sandy, and we will see you next week. Now, remember, if you want your stuff featured on Wingman's Hangar, send it in. We just might use it. And send those questions and videos into the forums. We love it. Michael put a little thing right there for you to see. Just go to the forums, look for the feedback, or look for the questions thread. It'll be on the very top of the general chat area. And uh, send us those questions. We just might use it. And uh, remember, Wingman's Hangover, 15 minutes after today's show. Uh, we'll be in the, you just go into the chat roll, enjoy yourself. It's a bunch of chat rollians just hanging out, asking questions directly. Sometimes we take Skype calls. You never know. We'll see what's going on. Kind of goes old school on you. Next week, episode... 42. We've got something really fun. It is going to be a throwback edition. Mike and I are going what, Michael? We're going live. We're going live, baby. Da-na-na. We're going to do the show live, just like the old school, with cuts and back and forth. We'll give you a retrospective of the live stream and what happened. But it's episode 42. We can't skip it, which is going to be tough because the, the Citizen Con the night before and then the after party, if I have red uh, things on my eyes, well, sorry. Um, and remember, if you want your stuff featured on Wingman's Hangar, send it in. Hanger, we just might use it. I think I said that already, but we'll say it again. So we'll see you in the verse. Yeah.